GOP infighting has become front and center following the midterm elections. A main point of contention is who will take the speaker's gavel. Republican minority House leader Kevin McCarthy is vying for the top spot in the lower chamber, but not all members are on board. Here are Congresswoman Lauren Boebert and Congressman Matt Gates weighing in on the matter. Someone who we all respect, Marjorie Taylor Greene, says Kevin McCarthy is going to be a great speaker. I, I guess you'll have to ask Marjorie about that. I'm, I'm a fan of hers. I'm an admirer, but it's not something we see the same way. Lauren? Uh, well, you know, I, I've been um, aligned with Marjorie and accused of believing a lot of the things that she believes in. I don't believe in this, just like um, I don't believe in Russian space so, lasers. Are, are, are you a hard no? Space lasers and <laughs> okay. all of this. No, I, I'm just saying we, we need to actually have an inside conversation okay. and, and, and make sure that these promises are there. Spicy. Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, who threw her weight behind McCarthy, responded on Twitter to Boebert's comment, saying, quote, she gladly takes our money, but when she's been asked, Lauren refuses to endorse President Trump. She refuses to support Kevin McCarthy, and she childishly threw me under the bus for a cheap soundbite. Marjorie Taylor Greene further likened this disagreement to high school drama which it is a little bit, but uh, I mean, it's also a substantive, uh, the, pol the support for Kevin McCarthy, at least, is a substantive policy disagreement. I mean, this is the kind of thing that gets dims in disarray headline when it's happening uh, on the left. Is, are the Republicans well, we going to— We can't say to, about Republicans because there's, there's, no there, there's no alliteration. <laughs> Republicans in, rearranging we're trying. <laughs> Whatever. But, like, is, is this a, a legitimate—I mean, look, I think a lot of the Dems and Disarray headlines are often silly. Uh, mm -hmm. They're people who have substantive disagreements, blah, blah, blah. Is this similar? Do you think that this is uh, being framed as sort of a cat fight by the media for all kinds of reasons? No, it's a legitimate disagreement. Uh, there is actual— there, there is, there's a, a, a fight on the right about what the direction of the party should be, and they have actual, I mean, it's, there's also a fight mostly about personnel. Uh, there are people who still very much want Donald Trump to be in charge of the Republican Party, who don't want DeSantis coming along. You see them kind of sniping at DeSantis on Trump's behalf. And then there are some people, I think all these people, Gates, Boebert, maybe Boebert hasn't said Gates, but Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene are both supportive of Trump and want want Trump. Um, I mean, Gates might also be supportive of DeSantis. I don't know. But they disagree about McCarthy. What's interesting about the McCarthy fight is I don't really, so I, I don't quite understand what their issue is with McCarthy because it, when he talks, he sounds to be like a pretty uniting figure for these factions. Um, he has, not, unlike McConnell, who I, I at least understand why the more MAGA faction really dislikes McConnell. They don't like his spending choices in the last election. They don't like, and, and McConnell has signaled all out unlimited support for uh, unlimited spending on, spending on Ukraine. McCarthy has not done that. Mm -hmm. McCarthy has taken his members, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, seriously in, in saying that maybe there ought to be some limits and that we're getting sick and tired of this. It sounds like McCarthy has a good personal relationship with Marjorie Taylor Greene, which is an important reminder to always keep in mind how many of these things are, are, are personal, yeah. are, are, are based on friendship and alliances. Sure. Um, so Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert often thrown together, but are not the same person and yeah. have different relationships with Kevin McCarthy. Also, maybe it's not about a lot of substantive disagreements with Kevin McCarthy as a speaker. Maybe it's about the fact that they are simply holding out to make demands in a way that mm -hmm. is perfectly reasonable for a Congress member to want to use their leverage. And I got to say, we recently interviewed um, Utah Representative Blake Moore, who was speaking, you know, very you know, casually and openly about there being a competition for the speakership that was kind of healthy and normal, says these things happen. And he's right. Historically, these things have happened frequently. There are multiple rounds of voting to decide who's going to be Speaker of the House. And I got to tell you, as a leftist, it is so refreshing to hear mm -hmm. because, you know, as, as uh, Blake Moore pointed out, two years ago, there was nothing of the sort. You couldn't get a peep. There wasn't a single Democrat in the House who was willing to withhold their vote for Nancy Pelosi, even though there was a legitimately substantive upswell of support for that idea among the actual Democratic voter base, especially the leftist voter base. Nancy Pelosi, a historically unpopular figure, it didn't matter. Nobody was willing to go toe to toe with her. And even, even if not to displace her, to get basic concessions in terms of committee appointments, mm -hmm. votes on various bills, and the like. 
And frankly, it's hard for me to see this as a dysfunction on the side of Republicans when I am envious and I wish that this kind of um, energy existed. On they the should hold out for the right to bring amendments to the floor without the leadership's uh, permission. That is something that used to happen that never happens anymore. Representative, uh, former Representative Justin Amash complains about this all the time. And that's what he said they should hold out for, an agreement that they get to actually, Congress can actually do Congress. Yeah. They can actually Congress, Congrify. They can, they can <laughs> gather and, and propose uh, actual laws and bills and amendments. That ne it's all orchestrated in backroom deals. It yeah. all not, nothing happens without the speaker's permission, yeah. or or, the, or the, often in in mutual conversation with the minority leader. Uh, that is the kind of actual like power to the people type thing they could be holding out for. Now, I haven't actually heard them articulate that. I'm not, I'm not sure what's yeah, at stake. Right. That would be great if they did that. that that's the thing. And, and in, the, in the kind of left context of this two years ago, that was one of the requests, or rather, requesting specific floor votes on issues like Medicare for all were central to the demand. The idea being there are all of these policies that are actually very popular among the people, but never get any kind of hearing in Congress because I think there is a lot of bipartisanship in Congress. It's just bipartisanship over corporate uh, issues that aggregate power, wealth, and control to the 1% at the expense of average working Americans. So to the extent that we do have a couple of real ones in Congress, a couple of people who are genuinely populist on either side of the aisle um, in and either in, in any kind of political camp, even within these parties, they should have an opportunity to force everybody else in their party to explain why it is it is that they're not on board with these broadly popular policies. Um, but, but there's it's cloak and dagger. They yeah. get away with it precisely because those kind of mechanisms are no longer available to folks anymore. Those uh, remarks, that, that interview with Gates, by the way, that was at uh, Turning Point USA, the conservative uh, student organization. They had a gathering uh, recently, I think it just recently concluded, where a lot of conservative superstars were there speaking. Carrie Lake was there and spoke, um, I think angling very much for a, a, a VP slot in a, in a Trump candidacy uh, she uh, her her remarks were very uh, well, very well received wild applause for her so uh, most of her remarks concentrated on how she actually won the governor race and how the, her lo the lawsuit she's filed mm -hmm. has some plausible way to actually make her governor, mm -hmm. which it obviously doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, very similar to the Trump scenario from a few years ago. She also she called out the media in the room. Uh, mm -hmm. She was she pointing to media in the back room, said, "Yeah, get ready to record this because I'm going to say that controversial th controversial thing." Oh, I can see you turning on your recorders. And she apparently the... there were no media in the room. Oh, she really? Was just pointing at random people <laughs> who happened to be like sitting on a slightly higher days or something. <laughs> well, it never. It's never not entertaining to watch some of the content that's coming out of it that is, particular conference. It is entertaining. But as I think uh, uh, Steve Bannon was there, so he was interviewing a lot of people about the speaker's race as well. And uh, what I found interesting is that he pointed out, and I, I've seen him say this on his own show, you know, he's talking to people in Trump world who are against McCarthy um, and who are against the Ukraine spending. And he's pointing out, Bannon is pointing out, Bannon, you know, a very key, pivotal Trump figure, pointing out that what is Trump doing about it? Right. Trump has endorsed McCarthy. He's not said a word against him. Mm. And he has said nothing about the Ukraine funding overall. We well, don't even know where he stands. Funny, funny you mentioned that. <laughs> so another point of contention for the Republican Party is, in fact, this ongoing funding for Ukraine. Um, as you mentioned, Robbie Kevin McCarthy already signaled that under his leadership, he will not give a, quote, blank check to the war-torn nation, a point he made again after Ukrainian President Zelensky's address to Congress last night. But on the Senate side, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has taken a different position. Here he is addressing the press on Tuesday. Making sure the Defense Department can deal <clears throat> with the major threats coming from Russia and China providing assistance for the Ukrainians to defeat the Russians. That's the number one priority for the United States right now, according to most Republicans. That's sort of how we see the th challenges confronting uh, the country at the moment. Both Republican leaders may disagree on Ukraine, but regardless, McConnell has expressed support for McCarthy's bid for the House speakership. And I, I just want to know how McConnell qualifies most Republicans in that claim. Does he mean most members of his uh, of, of the Senate, of the House? Does he mean actual Republican voters? Because mm. I think you get three very different uh, answers there, but that remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. We'll have more rising right after this. Stay with us. <laughs> 